Wesley has just been bitten by a snake um, about two or three centimeters up the left ankle. And uh, I am going to apply what is called a pressure immobilization bandage, which is the first state for snake bite recommended right around the world. Um, when you want to do the pressure immobilization bandage, you actually need uh, uh, two sorts of uh, medical equipment. One, you need about this kind of elastic bandages. Now, uh, this is not very elastic, but the more elastic it is, the better. Uh, and we have, I have about uh, four of them here, which I'm going to use uh, for this demonstration. And we need a splint. Uh, for the splint, you can use anything. You can use a timber, you can use a pole, you can use a stick, you can use a shovel, you can use a bush knife. Here we have an umbrella. We're going to use an umbrella for the split. Now the first thing to do is to actually apply um, uh, uh, thick bandaging around the bike side right there. So I'm going to apply the uh, bandaging now. now. I'm going to put it about around eight times. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, I'm tying not not too tight, but not too loose. Not too tight to obstruct blood vessels, and not too loose. It has to be just tight enough to compress the skin. Uh, and that we're gonna go down uh, to the leg. Now. When you uh, at least try to do like a two or three rounds of bandaging uh, around an area, see progress down the feet. Now, when you're down here in the feet, you have to keep the toes free. Do not uh, put the bandaging over the toes. Um, it has to be free so that you can assess. Uh, or the nurse or the doctor will assess the blood circulation in the toes. If you tie it too tight, the toes will go black or bluish black, and you can tell that it's too tight so you can release it. So in order for, to, for you to gain that information, you have to leave the toes free. Uh, tie this back up, over the bite side again, and all the way up uh, to the mid of the tie. Uh, and let's tie it two or three times um, around the leg. It's the progress. Uh, use another one. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's tie tight, but not too tight. You can leave your trousers on, obviously, because. If he's wearing a long pants, you can go over the pants. Just tie it around and over the pants. Like this. Now, um, yep. Remove these clips. So this is like halfway up the ties. Okay, we put there another clip there. Now that's the bandage you apply. Now we have to splint the leg. The reason why we splint the leg is so that he doesn't bend the knee or the ankle. Because every movement will contract the muscles of his leg and then it will remove the venom or the snake's poison from down here in his leg he was bitten up into his upper leg here, into his chest and into the bloodstream. So to prevent that we have to splint the leg and you can use anything but we use our uh, this umbrella here, as long as uh, you stop him from uh, moving his uh, ankles with the bag, okay.
Okay. And just tie this here, and that should prevent him from uh, bending his knees and ankles. And this is actually uh, the pressure immobilization bandaging. Now, when a person is bitten by a snake, it's important that the person doesn't walk because if he walks or he uses his muscles, then the venom will go quickly into his bloodstream and, uh, and cause the poisoning effects that we see in uh, snake bites. So the patient must always be carried with him. Uh, as some, some people have been taken to the health center. This can actually work and keep the poison in the leg and prevent it from spread, spreading into his body for up to five days, they say. But it's, uh, we encourage uh, people who have been bitten by snakes to at least seek treatment within 24 hours if you live out in places like Rigo or Meke or, or Karuku. And if you're living uh, around the peripheries of the city, uh, say up to uh, Bautama, or up to Kamalele, then you can do this. You can bring the patient in and then uh, to the hospital to be treated for it. Thank you very much.